Hey guys, I wanted to take a few minutes to show you a lesser known PDA from the 90s. It's called the Omnigo 120 and it was released by Hewlett Packard in 1996. Um, it's the successor to the 100 model that was released a year earlier in 95. And both these units shared a lot of similarities. Uh, they also had a few subtle differences and I'll, I'll explain the differences in just a, a couple minutes. I actually have a 100 model so I'll just show you the two in comparison to one another. Um, but they both ran on the Geos operating system, Geos 2.1, I believe. And that ran over a special version of DOS um, that was installed on the machine. Uh, they both also ran on a 186 compatible CPU running at 16 megahertz, so pretty quick for the time. Um, they also both had 3 megabytes of ROM. Um, on the 120, it was filled to capacity with applications. I think there was some room to spare on the 100 model and they both also had only one megabyte of RAM which by today's standards is pretty laughable but even in 1995 and 96 that was not very impressive and so people often had to invest in external RAM cards in order to really get the full benefit of the Omnigo. And so let me open it up and you'll see that it reveals a clamshell PDA with a full QWERTY keyboard and five function keys and the screen although pretty small, um, did offer a lot of benefits. It was a holographic green screen that was highly reflective. It actually was not backlit. The unit's currently turned off, but you'll see that it's just glowing because um, it takes in light and optimizes it very well. And you'll see that on the left and right side are a list of icons, and these are part of a touch screen, and if you tap them with your stylus or your finger, it actually brings up that application um, for you and some of the applications include you know your notepad it's got a phone book appointment calendar um, over here on the right there's a spreadsheet um, quicken help menu and uh, also there's graffiti which was a handwriting recognition software that if you've ever used a palm you've probably heard of it but it was really unique on the Omnigo because you could write anywhere on the screen and it would convert that to text um, oftentimes um, even in today's world you know, those handwriting recognition, recognition software, you have to write in a small box, and only if you write in that box will it convert it. So that was pretty impressive that the Omnigo offered that. Um, the stylus is actually here in the bottom right. And you just pull it out like that. And uh, also on the right is where the PC card slot is. And so you can pull it out like that if you have a card in there. And uh, I do. I have a compact flash adapter with a 128 megabyte compact flash card. Probably more than I'll ever need. Um, but you know, why not? These days it's about five bucks to get something like that. But back in 96, um, you could only dream of getting something over, you know, five megabytes. Um, and even that would probably cost you several hundred dollars. Um, on the back, you'll see that there is a battery compartment and it took two AA batteries. And over here on the left is where you would put your backup battery, um, 3 volts, it's a coin cell. Uh, also here on the left is um, where you would stick a special serial cable that would allow you to transfer um, information to and from your Omnigo to a PC. And I do have that cable right here. And uh, this end goes into the Omnigo, this goes into your serial port. And um, really most of the connectivity programs available are only compatible with Windows 95 and so I'm pretty much stuck using Omnicom which is pretty cool it's a DOS compatible um, connectivity program and so if you do have an Omnigo and you're wondering how the heck do you get stuff installed on there I would recommend Om Omnicom. Um, one of the criticisms about the Omnigo was the fact that there was no external power source so you were stuck um, using batteries and so sometimes people would make their own um, AC adapters, and I was one of those people. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Let me take these batteries out, and let me pull out my homemade adapter. All right. So it's just a a wood dowel with a couple screws, um, AC DC converter, and an AC adapter. Um, you just have to make sure you get all the voltage right. And uh, let me stick it in and show you how it works. So it just <clears throat> powers on like it normally would. And you'll see that 
I was talking about the the Geos operating system. That's what it looks like. It's a GUI based operating system, and I have a bunch of you know games and programs on here. Uh, let me go ahead and just play a quick game for you. Got some Tetris. Start a new game. So there you go, there's some Tetris. And that's pretty much it. Just wanted to give you a quick demonstration. I do have a separate video that's going to show you a lot more of the programs that were available for the Omnigo. And uh, really quick, let me just bring out the 100 model so you can see the two in comparison. Have one over here. And so you'll see instantly that one has a gray screen, one has a green screen. This one's pretty reflective too, but just not quite so much. And really the only other differences that I can see between the two is the fact that um, Quicken and Clip and Go, two different programs, were actually installed in ROM on the 120 and they were not, not available in ROM on the 100 model. You actually had to install them yourself. But other than that, not really a whole lot of differences. HP claimed that the 100 could not use compact flash cards, but um, I have pretty much um, broken that myth. You can use Compact Flash. Um, I've been able to use the exact same card um, interchangeably between the two units, and so that works fine. So, anyway, just wanted to give you a quick demonstration. Thanks for watching. Bye.